My name is Nuria Lopez, and thank you for viewing and participating in my per presentation for circuit switching versus packet switching. Even though we've learned a bit on packet switching and circuit switching throughout this course, I actually wanted to get into more detail and show us to why I decided to use this topic. Many of us are familiar with telephones and computers and how technology has improved over the past few years. Now this is what interested me. Most of us have used analog telephones before. You know, the hooked up to the wall type of telephones instead of the current cell phones that 99.9% .9 of us use and own. Yes, I grew up with this kind of phone. Ironically, they still exist. These kinds of phones use a circuit switching network. How does this work, you ask? Well, it's simple. I'll use an example. When you place a call to someone on an analog telephone, a dedicated connection is set up between the both of you. While this call is going on, only you two can use that telephone line. Once your call is finished, the connection is broken per se, and it becomes available now for someone else to use. Circuit switching is defined as a telecommunications technology by which two network nodes establish a dedicated communications channel, circuit, connecting them for the duration of the communication session before the nodes may communicate. This has been used for many years because it's something consistent, something steady, as a phone call between two people would be. With technology evolving, communication has definitely changed just in the past 15 years alone. Things needed to change, faster connections, easier ways to send information. Years ago, 56K modems were introduced in order to connect to the internet. Thinking back, this was very frustrating because it was a slow connection. Now DSL and cable modems are coming in with faster speeds in order to download and upload files efficiently. Routers are used to do the dirty work. And this is where packet switching comes in. Using the same idea with the phone, just imagine it with the internet. It's not just one connection to another person as a phone would do. It's billions of computers all connected together in a big combo. But how can this be done, you ask? Packet switching. Packet switching is a method of breaking data files into small packets or chunks in order to send them across a network. A good example for packet switching is VoIP, voice over IP as it's called, or even Skype. The first experiment VoIP call was made in 1973, but the first software designed to provide users with internet calls didn't appear until 95. A lot of things now are using VoIP, but I'll get into that later. It's not just a phone call anymore. It's packets being sent through a network, chunks at a time, so it makes it easier and not cluttered. So how does packet switching really work anyway? Well, each packet is sent with a header address, so it knows exactly where to go. Sometimes it may not be the shortest or best route, but it gets where it needs to go. The header address also shows the sequence for reassembly, so when they get to the destination computer, it's put in the right order. A packet also contains details of the number of packets that should be arriving to the other side, so if one packet fails, the other computer will get a message back asking for that packet to be resent. I'll use an old story to compare and contrast the difference between packet switching and circuit switching. The battle between circuit and packet technologies has been around a long time that it's starting to become like the old story of the tortoise and the hare. In this case, the hare is circuit switching fast, reliable, and smart. The hare starts out fast and keeps a steady pace, while the tortoise starts slow but manages to double his speed every 100 meters. If the race is longer than 2 kilometers, 1.2 miles, the power of compounding favors the tortoise. Packet switching. In a circuit switch world, when the phone line would go down, the call couldn't go through. But in a packet switch world, Multiple routes can be established, so if a line does go down, a packet can switch to a different route in order to keep the line communication going. There are a bunch of advantages for packet switching above circuit switching. Just consider a few examples. This type of network is more secure. Bandwidth can be used to its full potential. Devices of different speeds can actually communicate with each other. It's not affected by line failure since it tries to redirect its signal and no waiting. You don't have to wait for a direct connection to become available. And even during a disaster of some sort, when the public telephone network doesn't work or it goes down, 
emails and texts can still be sent. But as with everything, you do have your disadvantages. You may be able to use bandwidth to its full potential, but if there's a heavy use, it may cause a delay. Since working with more data, not a dedicated line, data packets may become lost or corrupted. I favor packet switching more than circuit switching. Technology is arising all the time and evolving into bigger and better things, and I know that eventually packet switching will become stronger and the future for data as we know it. I work at a distribution center for t-shirts, and I deal with the everyday hustle and bustle of picking orders, shipping, and receiving. A lot of this work is manual, and VoIP is becoming a part of our daily routine for warehouses like ours. There are companies out there that have invested in programs for voice picking where an automated system is telling an associate where merchandise is stored within the warehouse. You don't have 10 pages for an order anymore. You have a machine telling you where to go, you go to that particular location in the warehouse and voila, you have your order. You put the information together, tag it, wrap it, and wait for the customer to pick it up. It's simple as that and it's something that is getting bigger and bigger and more and more every year every day every month on another level when we have conference calls with corporate members we can use programs like Skype to create video conferencing we have been in conference calls with private label vendors that are in China and we can speak to them and see them like if they were right next to us for gamers you have programs like TeamSpeak or Ventrilo where you can communicate with people around the world to play games like World of Warcraft, Call of, Call of Duty, etc. Technology is moving things in the direction of VoIP and it may not be long before the internet phone and the cell phone are the remaining two primary methods for voice communication. Eventually we'll be seeing Star Wars in the future of packet switching and phone calls. This concludes my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it and at least know a little more about these networks. Feel free to ask any questions and I will answer them to the best of my knowledge. Thanks.